Okay, so um, I had a more, um, I, I was going to present a, a series of tools that I've been working on, but I, when I realized how short 13 minutes was, I decided to um, just go over the um, latest uh, tool that I've been working on. And um, I hope that uh, maybe you guys will be able to uh, contribute or at least check it out. Um, it's not a huge framework. Uh, it's only about 10, probably, probably 10 Python functions. Um, the idea is that uh, we want to, we have sets of intervals, and we want to know if they overlap randomly, um, or if there there's significant overlap. Um, and you, the the GitHub repository is on the bottom there, and I'll I'll just dis, I'll display it again. Um, and and the I'll, I'll just go. Basically, this talk is going to be going over the features of this library and why it's useful and what it can be used for. Um, so. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, so uh, we all know, hopefully most of us, uh, or most of you know, uh, bed tools actually written by uh, Aaron, um, which basically allows you to just quickly get the intersection of uh, two, two files. In this example here, I'm showing a.bed and b.bed. Um, and then if you want to know the number of overlapping lines, you just count, do wc-l. Um, so that's what I would call the uh, um, observed metric. And then if you want to know what's a simulated metric, you, you can, the, for, for one of the files or both, you can, do a, you can shuffle the, the intervals and then count the number of lines of overlap between one of them, and the, uh, between a.bed and the shuffled intervals in b. And then in order to get the, the p-value or the likelihood of this occurring by chance, of your observed occurring by chance, you just repeat that step two. So this is ridiculously simple, right? Um, so you know, for what the stuff I'm going to be talking about is is uh, stuff like chip seek peaks, like Ryan was talking about, things that are not gene based, um, and the questions that you can uh, answer. There's a number of them, um, but w what what I found for the most part is I, I I give you know my job is is to do the analyses and send a you know kind of a finished data set to the researchers, and I would do that, and the data set would be annotated with genes, have the p values from the the um, the whatever analysis I did. And then the question is still, you know, all of these, the most important being the last one, um, because they're like, now what? And so that, I guess this is kind of what I'm, I'd like to get at with this uh, library is, you know, what, what can you do with these intervals after you have them? Um, and so this is an example of, uh, here on the bottom, it's showing what, what the effect of having a bunch of different null models. And so that's a, a, a thing that this library tries to do make make simple is um, allow you to test a bunch of different null models. So you know that obviously the genome isn't random, and so if we have uh, this example was generated on um, transcription factor binding sites. So we, if we have an observed overlap, and then we shuffle one of them to anywhere in the genome, when we actually know that you know transcription factor binding sites tend to occur in promoters, then we're we're spreading an, a, a, an interaction that you know is generally occurring in a smaller domain across uh, everywhere across the interv interval across the genome and so of course we'll see what we do in um, the, you know a there that this, this simulated distribution is has a much lower overlap than the um, observed distribution um, and then we can see the one case here where it, the simulated distribution has a much higher level of overlap than the observed and I'll talk about how that was, how, what, what that actually means. Um, but basically the idea is, you know, we can actually learn something about our data by understanding how the null model changes what we, uh, how we look at it. Um, so just back to this, remember this is how we can naively um, calculate the, the null model and the observed overlap. Um, so what this the software does is basically take that same kind of syntax and it wraps gene, uh, bed tools where it can and adds uh, a few features um, and, and automates this and parallelizes it. So in the, in the first um, black box there, you see uh, what, what it would take to test the overlap naively, you know, shuffling across the entire genome. And it does it by default a thousand times. And the output is always um, JSON so that it can be called from any language. 
Um, and then, so I'll just go through a few slides where I'll show you the, you know, the command line version and then the, the Python function version, and you can see that they're pretty much, you know, exactly what you'd expect. Um, I'm using uh, a, a library um, command ar, commander command r to basically just decorate the function and give you this command line interface from the function call, so I don't have to write a bunch of arg parse. Um, so bed tools already provides the it allows you to exclude certain areas, so it won't shuffle into the centromeres, or it, it will only shuffle into the transcription factor binding sites, stuff like that. Um, the things that some of the things that this adds uh, so that you can say, well, I only want to shuffle my intervals to within 1,000 bases of their current location. And this is a, a simple way to add some, some level of locality. Um, maybe a more useful one is to say, um, I want to shuffle to within some containing region. So in this example, um, it would shuffle um, the, the intervals in A to a random location within the interval in regions Dot bed which um, which contains them and so that's that's another form of locality and this was used a lot in the encode project and um, uh, by uh, it was developed by Bickle and he has uh, a lot of work also on creating these regions um, but I kind of you know leave that up to the to the user to specify their own regions and you know these, these regions could be the gene plus or minus 10 KB if you want to you know constrain it that way um, there's a, a, a lot of things you can do. Um, and then if you want to say, it's not, it doesn't require, say, a strict overlap. It could be if you want to, if, if, it's, if, it, if the intervals are within 500 bases, you'll consider them as overlapping. Um, you can do this, another method, which was, um, I think it's in this co-occur package in R, and it's also um, uh, explored quite a bit by, um, uh, hymen in this where I found it and so basically the idea is in let's say in this all transcription factor binding sites dot bed file we have all the locations uh, where say about 50 I think there's about 50 transcription factor binding sites where each of those transcription factors uh, has a putative binding site by some chip seek um, from from the encode project and we want to see is CTCF uh, more more likely to overlap with poll 2 than it is with another random uh, transcription factor in that uh, in, in that list there and so that's a different question than you know a different null model of, than if you just shuffle the location so these are fixed locations um, and then uh, the other thing is it allows custom metrics um, so here, here I'm just showing basically the metric uh, takes intervals to standard in and prints a, at the end of consuming all those intervals prints a single number to standard out and that's the metric so it calculates that metric for the observed and it calculate, calculates it you know n times for the simulated and and compares them um, so yeah this can be ruby awk python whatever and so uh, here's an example of uh, a python script that just reads from standard in like i said um, it, it iterates over standard in and is basically a weighted average of the fourth column by, weighted by the length of the interval. Um, and so if, if you call this from Python, you know you don't want to specify a, a string that you're going to call, so it's a, a function. And so you can see, again, it's the same thing. It has to take a, a, a file handle and then return a number. So you can see the bad metric there is a completely valid um, function to send it, it's not going to help be very helpful, but that's, that's what you would send it. It's something that takes a file handle and returns a number, and so this, this function that probably makes a little more sense here is just the, the sum of all the, or the length, the sum of the lengths of all the intervals in the a.bed file that uh, are, have an overlap in b. Um, and again, it's very simple syntax to, to, to write this. Um, and so, yeah, the, the point being again that you can allow, you can ask more specific questions. You can form a, a you can look at different null models and a, ask different questions and all the the you know somewhat painful bookkeeping stuff is handled for you. Um, I try to not cr cr create as few temp files as possible, stuff like that. Um, and so it automatically parallelizes using um, 
uh, multiprocessing. It, but you can send it um, right now. I just this I have this ncpus um, parameter, and it, if you call it from Python, then you can send ncpus a, a, a callable, and so you know the default would be, or, or something similar to the default would be uh, the commented out section there, where you have a, pro a multiprocessing pool, and you send it the map function, uh, the method of that pool. But you can also send it the map function of a IPython client, and so you know that would give you uh, a different means to parallelize. Um, and so one thing that I'd I'd like to do, um, I, as I said, I'm just started working on this, um, is to make it so there's kind of a, a data repository. Um, when, when Aaron was talking, I, I added to the next slide to kind of co-opt that his data sets from um, Gemini um, to. Basically, you're going to take, take your data set that you have and you know, just throw it against the wall and see what it, what it looks like compared to all these other distributions. So what I have on the right here is um, segmentations from the ENCODE project from, uh, I think it's Chrome HMM, but each, each one of these uh, rows is, um, is a segmentation. So what the Chrome HMM is a supervised learning, so it classified it as a enhancer, uh, elongation, quiescent. So you can look at the blue line and see as well as my um, data set more overrepresented in um, or have a higher overlap than expected uh, by, by compared to my null model or lower. So you can see where you're enriched and where you're depleted. So which, which can tell you something about your data set kind of as an exploratory data. Um, so as I said, this is very much um, Work in progress um, needs needs to do, have some visualization. This this visualization is actually from a previous um, iteration of this library that I wrote. Um, I need to allow seeding for reproducibility, good examples, and um, yeah, data repository, which I've I've sort of started some scripts to download, you know, common data sets that you can compare against. But I need to work on that, and uh, yeah, I hope someone will or all of you will uh, contribute or use it. Thanks.